The plan is to create an apocalypse that will exhaust and depopulate the masses through deadly designer viruses, global terror, economic disasters, and nuclear war, when the remaining survivors will gladly embrace the promises of a handsome, charismatic new leader who will unveil his plan of hope for eternal world peace. I'm Colonel Lauren Erickson of the Department of Defense Global Emerging Infections Surveillance and Response System, also known as GEIS. Our mission is to detect, monitor, and respond to infectious diseases that threaten our military personnel and their families. We're actively monitoring cases around the world. By now, most of you have heard about coronavirus. The Department of Defense is acting to protect you and your family in the event of a pandemic. You need to start thinking about what you will do if the services you depend on are not available. Imagine the effects on your family and community if hospitals are overflowing, if schools, banks, and post offices are closed, if services such as telephone, water, and power are disrupted, Stores may close or have limited supplies. You may not even be able to rely on public transportation. Consider that the ability to travel, even by car if there are fuel shortages, may be limited. In the 1950s, a weapon was invented that has become more powerful than America's deadliest weapons of mass destruction. It is the weapon of mass deception, and it is right in our own living rooms. The hypnotizing world of picture television brings us the news of the world through two central news agencies called Reuters and the Associated Press. The Rothschilds bought Reuters in the 1800s, which later bought the Associated Press and made the Rothschild family owners of the world's largest central news services. To the present day, the world depends on these Rothschild-owned central news services as their main source of news and information. In his book called Who Owns the TV Networks, author Eustace Mullins claims that the major TV networks, radio stations, newspapers, and publishing empires are controlled by the Rothschild, Rockefeller, and J.P. Morgan money cartels through their corporate conglomerates. The bankster-owned media conglomerates include weapons manufacturers General Electric and Westinghouse, which profit from promoting wars. Control over the internet, publishing, recording, and top cable companies can be traced back to the same big five media empires, General Electric, Time Warner, Viacom, Disney, and News Corp. These media monopolies are owned directly or indirectly by the Rothschild, J.P. Morgan, Rockefeller, and Oppenheimer Brotherhood. Yes, there are now more stations and more media voices, but they're all coming from the same ventriloquist. I scream, you scream, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, you know the rest. Well, I scream, you scream, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, well, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, well, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, we all, well, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, we all know the rest. Well, I scream, you scream, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, well, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, you know the rest. Mike Meyer says, yeah, baby. 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 A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. The plan is to create an apocalypse that will exhaust and depopulate the masses through deadly designer viruses, global terror, economic disasters, and nuclear war, when the remaining survivors will gladly embrace the promises of a handsome, charismatic new leader who will unveil his plan of hope for eternal world peace. He will sell his peace plan by telling the world that border wars will only end by creating a world without borders. Religious wars will only end by creating one world religion of interfaiths. Economic wars will only end by creating a cashless, debt-free society. Rivalry wars between rulers will only end by creating one world ruler. The tools used for war, from handguns to nuclear bombs, will be eliminated, and one world army will be created, which will guarantee world peace. 
How will this eternal peace plan be accomplished? Through the United Nations, which is the brainchild of the Committee of 300 Ruling Families. The UN is their vehicle for world government and is located on 18 acres of prime Manhattan land donated by the most visible of the ruling families, the Rockefellers. The UN is a closed organization with no public records or open meetings. U.S. taxpayers have already invested $2 trillion in this world authority. Although most of the people working for the UN are genuinely working for peace, the UN is a godless organization controlled by the Committee of 300. These inbred ruling families pretend to have royal blue blood, but their blood is no more blue or royal than Hannibal Lecter's blood. Some speculate that these families of evildoers are demons or aliens or evil shape-shifting reptilians, but there is a more scientific explanation for their madness. For thousands of years, these families have practiced inbreeding between sisters and brothers, uncles and nieces, mothers and sons, to keep the power and wealth all in the family. This practice of inbreeding over thousands of years has produced a clever but pathological breed of conscienceless, sociopathic families who will stop at nothing to own every ounce of gold, every drop of water, and every blade of grass on planet Earth. The United Nations, which they founded and control, has clearly stated its goals of establishing a new world order, a UN standing army, and a global taxation system. The Queen's husband, Prince Philip, and Evelyn Rothschild have already established an interfaith declaration for the creation of one world religion. What would life be like in this world empire with one world religion, one world army, one world economy, one world court, one world media, one world government, and one world dictator? What the public doesn't know, peace on earth will be a forced peace in which citizens will have no rights. No right to bear children without approval, no right to travel without authorization, no right to own private property, no right to privacy, no right to bear arms, no right to protest, no right to receive an inheritance, no right to choose an education or a job or even a place of residence, and worst of all, no right to live. The right to live will be based on an individual's rating of usefulness to the royal elite. In this planned world without borders or nations, citizens will be disarmed of all weapons, including handguns, and will have no means to protest, fight, resist, or challenge this one world authority who will control them spiritually, economically, and militarily. Every human being will be electronically tattooed and will become helplessly dependent on this one world authority for all of their most basic needs. The masses will eventually be taught to bow down and worship this one world dictator who will rule the entire world from his eternal throne in Israel. They have waited for him. They believe in him. They expect he will heal the world's ills. Some say he is the Messiah, finally returned. But this man is not a savior. He is the king of terror who will usher in the end of everything. Despite all the red flags, many people deny that a problem even exists. It does exist, and the good news is there are solutions. The solutions lie in knowing what the three biggest fears of the world's ruling families are. The first biggest fear is exposure. They have gone to great lengths to cover up their trail of crimes and to win the public's trust through their media monopolies. Without public trust, their ancestral plan for global control is doomed. Their second biggest fear is losing public support. If the public stops cooperating, their plan is guaranteed to fail. Their third biggest nightmare is organized resistance by an informed and fearless public. The ruling families know from past experience that the will of the people can defeat all their military and monetary might. Vietnam is a perfect example. 
There is no doubt whatsoever that these ruling families can be totally defeated by turning their three worst fears into a reality.